<laughs> Talking tax with Tom. Uh, that's our show today. And it's a given Wednesday already, September 4th. Did I get that right? That's Tom Yamachika of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. He's the president there. Welcome back, Tom. Thank you, Jay, for having me on the show again. Sure. Well, we want to have you all the time. We think you're a very important player in, in sort of appreciating the community and appreciating our lives together in these islands. And uh, if people aren't interested in tax, they're going to pay a terrible price. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you wrote for uh, Hawaii Free Press recently, and uh, you wrote, a, which caught my eye, because I do get that on Sunday nights. Uh, and uh, you wrote about the changes in the tax law over the past 30 years. And, you know, the think tank is really into that. What we'd love to do is connect the dots and see the changes, the sea changes, the trends in our lives. Otherwise, you know, everything is of the moment. Right. <laughs> and we don't really have a, you know, an idea of where we come from and where we're going. When you make an analysis like, analysis like that, it's really important. So in a general sense, what were you writing about? I was writing about some of the taxes that uh, were fundamentally different between 30 years ago, 1989, versus now, 2019. Uh, and there were at least three big tax types that have undergone you know, tremendous change. Uh, one, and I wanted to talk about them. One of them is the transient accommodations tax. One of them is the barrel tax, and the third one's the conveyance tax. So that's kind of my top three for today. Well, good. I'm interested in all three, um, and I've seen all three evolve, as you have, and I want to connect the dots for all three. So let's, let's take the first one. What was the first one now, the transient? Uh, transient accommodations tax. Yeah. Okay. I, it started... That didn't exist a few years ago. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> it was actually originally enacted in 1986. It was supposed to be temporary. Uh, at that time, it was supposed to be for the purpose of building a convention center, which we didn't have at the time. So, One of those taxes that was identified for a specific purpose or project, but, that, but got to be in the general fund anyway. Yeah. Uh, my, my friends... Uh, at the uh, West Maui Taxpayers Association, were uh, you know quick to correct me when once the, uh, the the news article broke, and they said there was a kind of a, an agreement that uh, the the transit accommodations tax be two percent and, and temporary to to again finance the building of the convention center. But instead, what happened? Uh, it I believe the first version of the tax as enacted was five percent. And there were there were no earmarks for the convention center, although we you know we do know it was it was being built. But that was five percent back in back in 1986. Uh, today it's ten and a quarter. So there's there are some significant differences between then and now. Um, so now, what was the ju at the at the outset? What was the juxtaposition between the TAT and the gross excise tax? Uh, there wasn't any. So you just added it on top. That's right. It was layered on top of the hotel bill. So the GET was payable anyway, and the transient accommodations was on top of that. It's nice for the, the FISC, I suppose. I suppose. Um, you know, back in 1990, um, it, was, it wasn't even supposed to be the state's FISC. The, the idea was for it to be to the counties. Uh, so, at that time, in 1990, uh, the, uh, the, the tax was kind of transformed to say, okay, well, this tax is for the counties, okay, it'll be shared with the counties, uh, the, the state will retain 5% for general administrative purposes, because they were, they were, they were uh, running and collecting it, um, but that was the idea. And today... Pushback from the hotels? Uh, I'm sure there was. I'm sure there was. I mean, the, um, there, there apparently was a, a deal uh, for a hotel room tax of 2%. But, but that got scuttled quickly. Surprise. 
Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Okay. No man's so, life or property is safe while the legislature is in session. <laughs> that's right. Um, these days, uh, what the counties get from the tax is a fixed number. It's 103 million. Uh, despite the fact that the tax takes in, I think it's what half a billion dollars. Really, 500 million. I think 550. It's like a grab pounds. for the for the state general fund. Another grab for the state general. Well, fund. it's not only the state general fund. There's lots of stuff that's being fed by the transient accommodations tax. There is tourism marketing, right? Um, there is state land development. There's Turtle Bay. What does that have to do? I mean, these things are not necessarily related to the original purpose or the, or the, or the you know conceptual purpose of the TAT. But they require money. <laughs> they require money. That's, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. <laughs> Take it where you find it. That's right. <laughs> like a special fund. <laughs> there were a lot of special funds being fed uh, through earmarks off the tax. A lot of them still exist. Uh, transient accommodations is one of, the more, one of the more heavily earmarked taxes that we have. Uh, you know, I'm, it just, I, I don't want to get in the way of your thought process, but it just strikes me that. Whenever you do, and we'll talk about the barrel tax in a little while, whenever you do these kind of special dedicated taxes, you're, you're, asking, for, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for the legislature to step in and do irrational things. Um, and this is one good example of that. I, I don't know what you mean by irrational things, but... Uh... Well, take it, take it different, a different path than it was originally intended. And furthermore a different path from what the public perceives it is now being used for. The public doesn't know where this money's going. Yeah, I mean, that's, that I think the, was the whole idea behind the special funds in the first place. The, 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 the idea being, you know, if it goes into a special fund that's for, for a, a certain purpose that you know about, then at least there's some assurance that, that those monies will be spent uh, for that purpose and won't be, you know, mushed in with the general uh, the general budgeting process, as is everything else. Uh, of course, we, uh, you know, as a tax foundation, uh, we're not happy with that because we have a process that our constitution is set up. It's called the legislature and budgeting, and they are supposed to, you know, be the stewards of our public dollars, set priorities, and fund them with with the tax money that we give from our, you know, uh, our hard-earned dollars. We, we have to give it to them. And it should be totally transparent. Right. And, and uh, special funds tend to bypass the legislative process altogether. How transparent is that, right? Not. Not. And, and yet they keep happening. So what's the status? I mean, how has it evolved from... It's, it's uh, uh, origins till now, this uh, PAT. It sounds like uh, that cap of, or rather that, <clears throat> what is it, the county cap of 106 million is still the case? 103, yeah. 103? Yeah. Um, there have been like big fights with, uh, between the state and the counties about how much gets shared with them. Uh, counties said, well, uh, let's get a percentage. Right, and that's that's, not that's how it was for some for for, for, for a period of time, uh, and then uh, one one mayor kind of made the mistake of saying, you know, we want predictability and stability. So uh, the legislature said, okay, fine, we'll give you a fixed number. Mistake, <laughs> mistake, <laughs> tactical mistake. So, and and fixed numbers don't change from year to year, right? <laughs> although although the county's budgets change yeah. uh, for the worse. And if you want to go get a change, you got to go back to the legislature. That's not going to be easy. Yeah, with you know hat in hand and yeah. uh, you know begging posture yeah, and that right. kind of thing. <laughs> um, and now today, what is the the rate of the TAT is what? Ten point two five. And that's another negotiated number. What I mean to say is that, that, you know, that nobody ever sat down with a sharp pencil and figured either what, what the hotels could afford, what the industry could afford, or what, or what was necessary to support the projects that were related to the hotel and the hospitality industry. It's just a thrown-it-on-the-wall number. Am I right? 
Yeah, and uh, over the years, the, the TAT has been asked to bear more and more costs and for more and more things. Uh, you know, not only is, is this supposed to uh, support sharing of revenue with the counties, it's supposed to support tourism marketing, um, the uh, convention center authority. Uh, it's supposed to support uh, Honolulu Rail, if that's part of it now. I don't see the relationship myself. And the and the and the Turtle Bay uh, conservation easement purchase. Don't see my any connection there either. <clears throat> so what's happening is it's getting drained off into things that the legislature might otherwise pay out of the general fund. That, that's right. <clears throat> and the average guy in the street, you and me, we could go down on Fourth Street and ask them if they know this. But I don't. I don't. I don't think we really have to do that. They don't know this. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I would be very surprised if they did. Yeah. So what's the, what's the bottom line here? What, what, what do you predict for the TAT? It sounds like it's a great way to raise money, but it's not, not a great way to fund the right project. Yeah, and uh, it's, it seems like it's not going down anytime soon. Well, um, do taxes ever go down? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> we'll have to have a show about that. Yeah. It's going to be a short show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our income tax rate did, did fluctuate for a while. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but now, uh, it's, now it's kind of right back to the highest point it's we'll ever been. We'll have to pay more because there's more. We, we, the government needs more to do the things people expect of government, you know, except in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so that's number one. Is there any message you want to leave to our listeners exactly about the TAT? I mean, how they should see it, how they should, you know, sort of feel about it? Uh, my, my message to them is, you, know, you have to watch this stuff. If you don't, things tend to explode. Yeah. And uh, if you don't watch out, you're going to be on the receiving end of the explosion. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. That applies to all the things we're going to talk about. Right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, what, the barrel tax. The barrel One tax. One of my personal favorites because it has energy written all over it, but maybe not necessarily in how it's spent. <laughs> That's absolutely right. It, it was um, enacted in 1993, so 30 years ago there was no barrel tax. But uh, you know, around you know 1989 or such, there was of course the Exxon Valdez accident, uh, which kind of left people wondering about um, you know something similar happening here, and, and they and they wanted to kind of do something about it, so uh, they. Uh, enacted a tax of five cents uh, per barrel of imported petroleum product um, to establish a revolving fund to finance a response to an environmental disaster. And the, uh, the act, as it existed back then, it required that tax collections stop once the revolving fund reached seven million. Ah. Like, that's the same thing as uh, what happened with the TAT, isn't it? It was temporary, and it was a limited amount, lim limited tax. Then what happens? Yeah, whenever you hear the word temporary coming from those guys, you got to wonder sometimes, yeah. you know? Okay. Uh, and and uh, interestingly enough, uh, when, you know, the bill uh, to introduce the barrel tax wasn't even a tax bill. It was... Uh, the Hawaii uh, Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act wasn't a tax bill at all, as introduced in the that House. That is so strange. That, that is like hiding it. And then when it went over to the Senate, Senate Ways and Means Committee, pop the tax in. Boom, surprise. One of those sleights of hand that you see in the legislature. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> it's a significant tax. It affects everybody in the state. <clears throat> it is ultimately, don't you agree, regressive. Because, you know, everybody who drives a car is paying, rich or poor. Oh, uh, it, it's worse than that. And, and let me kind of uh, tell you a little bit about what happened to it. You know, we, like, like I said, we started off as, as five cents a barrel with an automatic stop. Right. Okay. In 2010, uh, the tax was increased from five cents a barrel to a dollar five per barrel. <laughs> With a stroke of a pen. <laughs> yeah, 21x. Okay, 21x. Okay. 
Uh, 43% of the revenues from the fund were spent to special funds to support energy security, energy systems development, agricultural development, and food security. Not all, the, not all at the same time, but that's what, that's what happened over the years. So all of these things weighed on the barrel tax. And of course, the, the remaining 57% went to the general fund. Ah. The, the, the it's, year it's like a black whipping hole. boy. Yep. It's like you whip it you, you're like a pinata. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, the provisions turning off the tax when it, when it hit the 7 million, uh, those just went poof. They disappeared. Repealed. Yeah, just repealed. So yeah. now, you know, there's just a, just a word on that, though, is that um, the Energy Policy Forum, which is just a forum kind of organization, it doesn't take, you know, affirmative. Um, advocacy type positions on things and and only then you know when it makes a statement it usually gets um, you know either a consensus uh, or, or a very high vote of confidence within its members on a given thing <laughs> that was a favorite thing the um, in those years the energy policy forum because it was supposed to encourage energy it was an incentive to clean energy which was all the rage but little by little, as you have described, it went somewhere else to things that really didn't have any connection with energy. And it went much higher without any particular benefit to energy per se. And uh, <clears throat> I think there have been changes since that time. That, oh, yeah. Uh, since there it was, was a, There's another big change in 2015. What was that? Uh, and that was when the tax was made applicable uh, to things other than fossil, I mean, other than petroleum products. Okay, it was made applicable to all fossil fuels. Yeah, and it also at some point it became, it was a, it, it was, it was a, maybe this was a bill that didn't pass, but I recall that there was a big attempt to take a, a part of it, a substantial part of it, and apply it to the Department of Transportation for the highways. Well, that's that's the fuel tax generally. I'm talking about the barrel tax. Yeah, the barrel tax is uh, a little bit different. I mean, it's 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 in the same chapter. Yeah, uh, but it. Goes goes to a different place. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, but you're correct in that there were several attempts uh, by the Department of Transportation uh, to to raise you know the fuel tax among other things. So that they, they, they they were looking at the they had the fuel tax. They wanted to raise the fuel tax, and they wanted to apply part of the barrel tax on top of all of that. I don't know whether it passed or not. I, I don't it, think it did. It was a raid on the on the barrel tax. The barrel tax is a, is a pinata. I mean, everybody wants part of it, and they have the weirdest um, arguments to, to claim that they get part of it. Yeah, but just, just to kind of give you an idea of, of how fast it's ballooned, um, in, in fiscal 1995, the tax brought in $2 million. And uh, in fiscal 2018, have any guess as to how much it brought in? $50 million. Oh, not quite. <laughs> 27 million. 27 million. 27 million. That's a lot of bread. That's, that, that's a lot of coal. That's <laughs> a lot of oil. And it's regressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's regressive so that everybody, you know, rich or poor, they pay on the barrel tax. So you can have somebody who can barely afford to drive a car. He's paying more to the barrel tax. And you have somebody who is, you know, wealthy. He pays the same per barrel, per gallon, all yep. that. You, you, you drive, you pay. I mean, that's, that's kind of what it pay. is. There's, there's no good rationale for that. I'm not sure why we have these strange taxes. Was it pushback against the barrel tax? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sure there was. But uh, that was kind of like before my time, really. You know, if, you, if you can look back now to the original purpose of the, of the barrel tax, that is to encourage the development of clean energy because we were all in a sweat about clean energy at the time. The no, beginning it, wasn't, the it wasn't even to do that. It was, it was to create the Environmental Spill Fund. Okay, environmental issues too. Environmental issues too. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was supposed to be temporary. It was supposed to take, you know, create the cleanup fund and it was supposed to stop. Why, why don't we just take this out of the general fund? If, if we need a tax increase, why don't we just increase the taxes, the income tax? I, and I notice how I excluded the gross excise tax because I don't think the gross excise tax should ever be increased again. Um, or possibly the property tax. Um, but why do we have to create these little pockets of tax and, and get away with saying, well, we're not really increasing the other taxes. 
It's a special tax you know, for because, a special purpose. Because, and I think you hit it on the head. Is if you try to increase the GET, try to increase the income tax, people are going to understand what that means. People will understand what that means, and they will, and they will push back. I mean, the, the, the last time, I think it was in the, in the 1990s, uh, that they tried to ra raise the GET, th there was just uh, an incredible amount of um, uh, pushback from all corners of the public. Uh, this was, I think, in, um, in, during Ben Caetano's time. Well, because they know it affects them in their pocketbook every day. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they know about it. They know uh, about it, right. Yeah, they, they don't know about the barrel tax. They don't yeah. know about the TA team. We went out down on the same visit at the street on Fort Street Mall, you and me, and we try to find out from people where the barrel tax goes or even exactly how much is being charged. They wouldn't know. Oh, well, they, <laughs> Nobody would know. I wonder if they know what it is. Right. Thank you. Right. Yeah. You know, even how the, what the process is. It's just a, a, one of those grabs. And it's unlikely to go away, just as you said about the TAT. It's not going to go away. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, once you kind of start down that path, it's hard, it's, it's hard to go back. Yeah. Okay. We got one more to cover now. This may be controversial. Hold on to your seats. This may be controversial. What's the third one? Uh, the third one uh, is the conveyance tax. <laughs> no, it's not going to be controversial. Nobody knows about that either. But it had a dramatic increase, didn't it? It did. What was it at first? I mean, historically. Uh, as enacted, it was five cents uh, per hundred dollars of consideration. So if I, if I, in those days, if I bought a house for a hundred thousand dollars, what would I pay? Uh, I think fifty bucks. Yeah. It's almost like a closing cost. Nothing much, like a notary fee. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. I mean, at that time, it, it wasn't really supposed to be a tax. It was supposed to be a, a method whereby the state, which was then administering the real property tax, could get information on how much houses were being bought and sold for because they had to update the appraisals. They needed the market data. Yeah. And you know, they couldn't just look at the conveyance documents because they were all, oh, one dollar in good and valuable consideration. They didn't say anything. Yeah, easy. Just you factor it in, it's, it's like the notary fee. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> but then somebody, I can, I can see somebody, somebody with a green eye shade and pay tax office. Hmm. We have to find another tax. We're going to look around for a tax that can be exploited, that can be expanded, a tax that we can grab onto because it exists, and then we'll blow it up that big. And that's what happened. Uh... I'm sure, I'm sure it did. I mean, uh, a couple of tax review commissions ago, um, you know, we, we have a, a tax review commission that is supposed to examine the uh, tax structure that we have and, uh, and report on it every five years or so. Well, about um, you know, five, six years ago, the commission that then existed uh, was pretty much given the mandate to, hey, you guys, we got to raise money, go find it. We'll figure out how, we, how we're going to do this. And this was a kind of sleeper. It was small, but it was a tax. It said conveyance tax. Say, hmm, a tax. Yeah, well, like I said, that was 30 years ago. Um, over the years, the tax rate was hiked again and again. Uh, now what it is... Somewhere along the line, people stopped thinking that it was merely a, an administrative charge. It became a real tax. It became a real tax. That, uh, that had you know, real fiscal implications. Because, because you know, whereas it was, it started off as five cents on $100, and now it goes up to $1.25. Let me do the math on that. That's 23 times? 25x. 25 times. 25x. That's more of an increase than the barrel, than the, uh, barrel tax. Yes, uh, right. That's, that's a dramatic increase. It's that's, like while we weren't watching. That's, that's very dramatic. Um, so the, the primary earmarks in that tax are the Land Conservation Fund and the Rental Housing Revolving Fund. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not... Uh, what has that got to do with the transfer of properties in general? Very little. It just has to do with property. 
So that's that's <laughs> that's the connection. It's not, so it's not it's not anybody. Nobody would expect that. Nobody would guess it. Uh, and, uh, and maybe my word irrational is too strong, but it doesn't have a connection, a rational connection, if you will. Well, and let me ask you this. Um, uh, this tax, the conveyance tax, 30 years ago brought in about three and a half million. What do you, what do you think it brings in now? Well, just, uh, well, you got two factors working. One is you got that 20, uh, one, what is it, 25 times, 25 times factor. And then you get the fact that real estate in the state of Hawaii value, the value that is used in the formula to determine the tax has gone up by whoa, 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 more than 25 times, I think. Anyway, so, okay, you say two and a half million to start with? Three and a half, yeah. Three and a half. Um, well, it's got to be more than 50 million, no? In, in fiscal 2018, 100.6 million. Oh, my God. Okay, I, I'm, I can't do these... Uh, calculations for you, Tom. But that is stunning, stunning. That's a lot of bread. It's a lot of bread. Think what you could do with $100 million every year. That's a lot of bread. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Do these you know, recipient organizations really need that? Uh, is, this, is this gravy for them? Um, uh, well, there's, there's always um, you know, people who say they need housing assistance. Uh, and this the Rental Housing Trust Fund is supposed to help with that. And then, uh, oh, there's, uh, of course, land conservation, which requires that, a lot of money. We need that. We need that. But there's, there's no way that this fund is going to be the, the sole source of funds for land conservation. I mean, we need much more than that to conserve the, the environment, the land. So some, something must be coming out of the general fund. Well, I'm sure there is. So you've, only, you've picked only three here. Oh, what, what messages do you want to leave before we go? Um, on the barrel tax, how should people see that? And on the conveyance tax as it exists today? Well, uh, again, my message is, you know, be aware. Uh, this, this is happening. This is happening to you. Uh, it, don't think it doesn't affect you because it does. All of these tax increases and explosive growth in governmental exactions, uh, they, they drive up the prices of everything. Uh, and if you don't think so, uh, you know, take a look at what you pay for a glass of milk or, or, or what, what does it take to buy a house here in Hawaii. It's sort of a creeping thing. And, you know, because Joe Schmo, you know, does not go down to the legislature because he's offended by these taxes. He, he may not even know that he's offended by these taxes. He's Probably not going to go and visit his representative or his senator and say, you know, you got to do something about this. Um, so as the Tax Foundation goes down there and says something about it, who else? Well, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's not our purpose. We, our purpose is to tell people that this is what's been happening, and if you, you know, uh, Joe Citizen, Jane Citizen are, are, are unhappy, uh, you have to make your sentiments known. We're not a you know, partisan political organization, so we can't go down there and say, this is bad, this is horrible. You're an educational organization. Yeah, we, we, we just provide the information so that, so, so that people like yourself and John Q. Public, uh, even lawmakers, we, we provide information to lawmakers so, so they understand what it is they're voting for. Well, one thing is clear, Tom Yamachika. We've got to keep on having these discussions. Uh, so that people, at least they know what's going on and they can make judgments about it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming down again. We'll do this again soon. There's so much to talk about.